In a sport filled with gimmicks, few were as unforgettable as Wilbur Johnson's. Known for his dramatic entrances, he would stride to the ring in a Dracula-style black satin cape. But his shtick wouldn't be complete without his signature sneer at the camera, accentuated by the large gap between his front teeth. They call him vampire, cape on his back, sneer at the camera, ready to attack. Gap in his teeth, red in his cup, in the ring, Wilbur always showed up. Wilbur Johnson was born on October 5, 1956, and grew up in Middletown, Ohio. He claimed to have started boxing by the age of 12 or 13, but in high school, he tried his hand at football. I got my teeth knocked out in football, Johnson said. When that happened, I said, heck with that. It was definitely too rough. The people out there were too big. I only weighed 139 pounds at the time. Turning his back on the gridiron, Johnson boxed at the Middletown Community Center under the tutelage of Harold Burton. He became a successful amateur, winning the Ohio AAU title twice and rising as high as number seven nationally in the welterweight division. However, in 1974, the 17-year-old was charged, along with two friends, with firebombing the Middletown School Administration building. Despite being a self-described bad kid, Johnson had his charges reduced and resumed his amateur career. He won four straight Ohio State Golden Gloves titles before turning professional in May of 1980. He won six of his first seven bouts before defeating future light heavyweight champion Don Lalonde in a six-round decision. However, seven months later, Lalonde took revenge by stopping Johnson in two rounds. Johnson had also developed his vampire gimmick, which was natural because of his missing front teeth. I love the smell of blood, Johnson told a reporter. I drink it for breakfast every day. Managed by Pete Susans, Johnson traveled up and down the Midwest, often appearing on ESPN. He became one of the cable channel's most popular fighters, entering the ring in a cape and adding red food coloring to his water bottle so it resembled blood. He also got a job as a maintenance man at the Market Square Arena where he worked the graveyard shift. He got so caught up in his own shtick that he said he only trained at night out of fear that the sunlight would render him powerless. But the reality was he just wasn't very keen on training, period. He only came to the gym to meet the guy he was fighting, manager Susan said. He smokes a pack of cigarettes a day and drinks cold 45 by the six pack. By 1983, Johnson had given up cigarettes and alcohol before a bout against the undefeated Carlos Tite. Johnson was competitive, hurting Tite, but lost by unanimous decision. Two months later, he made another appearance on ESPN facing Lenny Villers. And there is Wilbert Vampire Johnson coming out with his familiar cape on. And that debut on ESPN on New Year's Eve two years ago. And of course, Al, the last time we saw Vampire was in Hammond, Indiana. You and I did that fight against Carlos Tide. It was a war. Uh, Vampire came up on the short end of that, but uh, I'll tell you what, he gave Tide all he could handle. And he had Carlos Tide hurt late in that fight and in serious trouble, which is a good indication of his power. Uh, Vampire has an excellent right hand. That's something to look for in this fight. The key thing with him is, is he coming into this fight in shape? When he's in shape, he's a good fighter. Vampire told me this afternoon he's done something different for this fight than in his whole professional career. He trained six weeks. <laughs> he said usually 14 days at the most, and uh, he says he's in good shape. Of course, he originally thought he was going to meet Teddy Mann, and he will be taking on Lenny Villers. And uh, this particular bout, there is Lenny Villers out of Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, Villers uh, has fought as a... Light heavyweight, this is a middleweight. Let's go up now to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is in the middleweight division. It's for 10 rounds. The referee for this bout is Tony Perez. And now introducing in the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim. He weighs 162 and one quarter pounds from Youngstown, Ohio. His professional record, 11 victories against only six losses, one draw, seven big knockouts. Introducing Len Villers. And in the blue corner, wearing black trunks with red trim, he weighs 160 pounds even from Indianapolis, Indiana. His professional record, 23 victories, three losses, one draw, 14 by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Vampire Johnson! <laughs> Wilbert Vampire Johnson has, uh, well, he's had an interesting career. He's fought as a heavyweight before, and Lenny Villers has also fought in a higher weight classification as a light heavy. They're fighting as middleweight. 
Uh, Villers did not make the weight this afternoon. He missed it by a quarter of a pound, but uh, Vampire's uh, cornerman said, let's go ahead with the fight. Well, they are known for that. Vampire will get in and fight no matter what the case. And uh, Villers told us before, he said, I, I don't think I'm going to make the weight very well. And he didn't, but again, uh, Vampire figures that extra pounds won't, won't be a problem. We are scheduled for 10 rounds in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Lenny Villers uh, in our conversation this afternoon, Al. This is a make it or break it fight for him. Well, at 27, he decides uh, that after coming off a fifth round knockout loss to Nino Gonzalez, he said, I have to decide whether I can be in effect. That's a problem. Villers has been training very, very hard since that loss to Gonzalez. Didn't know he was going to have this fight because he is a, a substitution for Teddy Mann, who has moved up to our main event. But Villers said he was working extremely hard because he knew his next fight could be his last fight. And his eye is bleeding now. Bad cut over the left eye of Lenny Villers, but he has got Vampire in trouble. Good straight right by Villers. That cut, though, as you mentioned, a real bad one, just over his uh, left eye. On his eyelid. That's going to test the corner of Lenny Villers. As we are just... Uh, with less than a minute to go here in the first round. And he has Eddie Aliano, who is uh, one of the finest cut men in boxing in his corner, so he has a good one working with him. Break, break, don't hold it. I hesitate even to say the fact that Vampire has drawn first blood. Well, he has. <laughs> and he's notorious for that. Villers has been able to land some punches in this first round against Vampire Johnson, but the Vamps not at all against just coming out and exchanging punches. He's a strong customer from Indianapolis. He's been one of those borderline pros, Al. You know, you, you see greatness in him, but he's never really worked hard enough to, to see if it's truly there. I think that's a very accurate description of Johnson. And uh, he gets a big break early with that cut. And let's see if he can capitalize. An excellent right by Johnson. And Vampire's taking aim on that right eye of Lenny Villers. All right, right. No holding. Villers, six foot two, good reach. Top rank boxing will continue from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Lenny Villers and Wilbur right. Vampire Johnson right after this. Roger Twibel, Al Bernstein with you, and there is Lenny Villar. It's a very dejected young man because the ring doctor has just stopped this fight, and according to Villars, this will now be his last fight, as he says that Vampire Johnson hit him with a butt. Well, that may influence his decision, and let's see if we can pick up where their heads clash. Well, that oh. was not a butt. It was an accidental clash of heads. Uh, Johnson threw a right hand, and his head did hit. And there's another banging of heads, but again, that was, I think, unintentional. But whatever the case, the cut over Villers' eye uh, created a situation where the ring doctor felt he could not continue. Not the kind of win I think Vampire would like, but uh, he'll take it, I'm sure. Vampire Johnson, on the other hand, gets another win in his professional career. Probably not the way you anticipated getting this win, but you take them as they come. Uh, yes, I, uh, I didn't want to win this way. Um, I was just getting warmed up, and... And I really didn't, I, I, I anticipated a, a pretty good fight, you know, in, in Lenny. I, I never heard of him before, of course. I, I never do hear of none of my fighters that I fight. But I, I wanted to go a little bit. Now, you mentioned that you weren't really even warmed up yet in this fight. And certainly when you threw that right hand, it was an unintentional clash of heads. There was no effort on your part to butt, I don't believe. Oh, no, I, I never go that way. I, I'd rather take the hard way out than do it that way first. Vampire, you didn't get much work in this fight, which is rare. Generally, you do get some rounds in. What does this do in terms of your preparation for future fights? Uh, would you want to take something? I know you trained harder for this fight, you said, than many others. Would you want to take something uh, pretty quickly? Uh, yes, I, I think I would, Al. Uh, I think I would better take a fight uh, pretty soon. Uh, matter of fact, I like that Carlos tight back again. You would like to face Carlos. Of course, you had a memorable fight with him here on ESPN. Now, in that fight, it looked like you lo you ran out of gas at certain points in the fight, and you were pacing yourself because of it. And when you had him hurt late in the fight, couldn't quite take advantage of it. Yeah, that's 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 true, Al. I think that I paced myself a little bit, and then and then I picked up as the fight progressed. And and then when I got him hurt, I couldn't take advantage of it. 
but but now Carlos tight. I think he's running from me. He won't come to Indianapolis. He's scared. I want Carlos very bad. Carlos will not come to Indianapolis. I want him now. I want him in the ring. After battling to a draw against Nino Gonzalez, Johnson was offered $100,000 to face the up-and-coming knockout artist John Mugabe, a bout they called The Vampire Meets the Beast. Set for round one from Maracaibo, Venezuela. Mugabe in the white and Johnson in the red. Bear in mind, Mugabe likes to start fast. He likes to get in there and get this over with. Vampire keeps his hands off. He's had a record where he's never been off his feet. A record that stands in jeopardy today because he's standing in front of a man who has never heard a decision in professional boxing. by Mugabe. Tight advantage for Vampire Johnson. And Mugabe showing us his speed. Mugabe getting the left hand in on Johnson. And John Mugabe getting down to business here as we hit the halfway mark of round one. I think he caught the vampire's attention with that series of punches. John defeats Mugabe. Mugabe comes off his toughest bout as a pro, taking 10 rounds, stopping James Hardron Green in the 10th, and now Mugabe showing great confidence. The hands are down low. He has such fast reflexes, and his punches are so hard, he's beginning to reach the vampire. about 15 seconds left in round one the beast pursuing the vampire throughout this first round we'll be back right after these words for venezuela marv albert and Ferdy pacheco we apologize for the audio problems here at the start of ringside this is round two john mugabe in the white Wilbert Vampire Johnson in the red. Decisive opening round for the Beast Mugabe. In the corner, Vampire Johnson's been told to show even more movement and to jab as he moves. A short left by Mugabe. He doesn't know where he's at. He doesn't know where he's at. They should stop it. They should stop it. That's it. This mat has no padding whatsoever. His head hit there with a resounding thud. The judge was very wise in stopping this. And so Montero with the quick ball as Bergabi got the left hand in. And Johnson just could not clear his head. And that's it. A second round knockout for John the Beast Mugabe. Take another look at it. Well, that's a thudding hook. No question. And Mugabe throws with such power. Bear in mind, this man's never been down. This is a one-punch knockout. Right on the button. Ooh. Now watch his head. That this It's criminal the way this padding has been eliminated from the ring. The ring is a pure gorge with a very thin horsehair, which is not only devastating to the legs, but when they get hit, watch the head bounce up there. The referee was very wise in not allowing this. Once rated as high as number 11, Johnson dropped out of the rankings after the loss. He went back to his old habits of not training, and manager Susan's gave him an ultimatum. Vampire has been promising to get in shape for nine years, Susan said. He'll have to take training seriously or quit. In a dangerous sport like boxing, a guy has to keep himself in top physical condition. I don't know if the vampire has the discipline to do it.
If he doesn't, I'm through booking him. Johnson lost his final three bouts, making his last ring appearance in October of 1989. He returned to Middletown, Ohio, where he found work as a bus driver. Outside the ring, Johnson was by all accounts a kind man who dedicated himself to his community. He was actively involved in a local Baptist church and spent years trying to open a boxing gym in honor of his former trainer, Harold Burton. Johnson was committed to helping young men in his community, inspired by the impact Burton had on his own life decades earlier. Unfortunately, Johnson passed away on December 26, 2019, at the age of 63. His memory lives on in the hearts of those he touched, both in and out of the ring.